Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 983. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. I want to be able to select any name from this drop down and then from across multiple sheets, data one. I need to look down here, find the last Joe, get that number, bring it back. Find the last Joe on this sheet, bring that number back. Find the last Joe, bring that number back. But I need to do it for a bunch of sheets. Now, there's a few ways we can do this. I'm going to take the approach. I'm going to put the actual sheet name in the cell here and then build a formula that looks at that sheet name. And that sheet name will tell the formula, as I copy down, to move and look on a different sheet. Now, let's look at this is a template. It's exactly the same size on each sheet. B2 to B20 are the names. C2 to C20 have the numbers we want to retrieve. Right Now, a sheet reference inside a formula, if I type an equal sign, click on the sheet, click on any cell, and hit Control Enter, I can see the syntax, a single apostrophe. There's the sheet name, just as you see down here. Another single apostrophe and an explanation point. I'm going to click Escape and Delete. Now, the way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to put the sheet name in each cell, but I'm going to put that syntax in the cell, too. Now, that's not always possible. And I've done lots of other formulas on using the indirect function, which we're, we're going to use. And we put the syntax inside the formula. But sometimes, you know, it's just as easy to type it out. So we want to try that in this video and look at a problem we get. If you type, you want uh, this data six sheet. Type a single apostrophe, data, open parentheses, six, close, single apostrophe, explanation point. Hey. What, ha what? What happened to that lead apostrophe? When you put in a lead apostrophe, it's you telling Excel, hey, I want this thing to be text. So that's what it's doing. It never shows a lead apostrophe. So if we type a, another lead, uh, apostrophe, now it will display it. Because the first one says, hey, this is going to be text. And the rest of it is the text to display. All right, now let's look at the indirect function. It's a great function, this ref text argument. It's programmed to take text that represents a reference and convert it back to a reference. So here it is. There's my sheet name. I just need to join to that B2 to B20. Now I'm going to use ampersand, Shift 7. That's the join symbol that allows us to join things. And then I'm going to end double quotes, B2 colon B20, end double quotes. And any text in a formula has to be in double quotes. But now that thing together. Broop, F9, that's the text that represents a reference, Control-Z. I'm going to highlight this, the entire thing. Remember, indirect is going to deliver a column of values, F9. Whoa, that's cool. Joe, Joe, Mo, Mo, Joe, Mo, Control-Z. Control-Enter. If I copy this down and highlight this, F9. Three Joes, Mo, Joe, and Mo. So if I go look over here, sure enough, three Joes, Mo, Joe, Mo. All right, now that's just part of our formula. We're actually going to have to um, you create this piece again for the C column. But before, because the C column has the thing we want to get and retrieve, this has the thing we're matching, right? We want to get the last Joe. Now let's go look at this. If you have a bunch of Joes, right, those are duplicates. That usually causes trouble for lookup formulas, except if you do approximate match, when you do approximate match, if the lookup value is bigger than any of the items in this list, it always gets the last one. So let's go back over here and see how we use approximate match to get the last Joe. Now, the first thing is we have to ask this range, is anything equal to Joe? And then I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it. If I highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see it gives me a bunch of trues and falses. Now. If we're going to do approximate match to get the last value we're interested in, which is the last true, we're going to have to convert these to numbers. But here's the problem. If we do our standard convert uh, an array of trues and falses to ones and zeros, true turns to one and false turns to zero. That zero will be treated as a, a number by approximate match, and it will always get the last one no matter what. Which will, so we have to be careful in the way we convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. 
I'm going to do division. Because 1 divided by true is 1, but 1 divided by false, which is really 0, is divide by 0 error. So the way we're going to convert this is only the trues will be 1's. The falses will be errors. And the lookup function will just flat out ignore that. Control Z. Now I'm going to first put this in open parentheses, because that equal sign is a comparative operator. And if we're going to take that array and go 1 divided by, we need that to calculate before the division. And in the order of operations for Excel, this happens at near the bottom. right? So now when I highlight this and hit the F9, wow, look at that. I got a bunch of 1's and divide by zeros. Those divide by zeros are perfect, because the lookup function will just ignore them. It'll only find the last number. Now notice, we're only ever going to get 1's here. So if we're going to use approximate match and give the lookup value some huge value, all it has to be is what? 2, Control Z. So I'm going to say, use that little bit right there inside the lookup function. Now, the lookup function is great for a few reasons. It only does approximate match. And the lookup vector and result vector can handle array calculations without using Control Shift Enter. So for this lookup value, I'm going to give it a 2 comma, this lookup vector, if I click there and hit the F9, there it is. That's the lookup vector. It helps determine the position for the result vector. So the 2 zooms through here. Because that 2 is bigger than any number, it's always going to get the position of the last one. What you have to count is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, Control Z. Why is this an array calculation right here? Because any operation done on an array of values, which an array of values is just more than one value, is an array calculation. So right there, we did this comparative operator, and we did this division. All right, now I'm going to copy this little inner bit, Control-C, come to the end, comma, and the result vector. Hey, those are the things you want to get and retrieve back to the cell. And use that same bit, but change the B to a C. And there we have it. You could even highlight uh, inside here. You could highlight that and hit F9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the 1 is going to be the last value associated with Joe. Control Z. All right. And because we're using lookup, we simply have to Control Enter, not Control Shift Enter, like uh, most array uh, formulas require. Again, the idea is that argument in lookup is programmed to handle array calculations without control shift enter. And there it is, 191632. If we go look at the last sheet, there's the 2 for Joe. There's the 3. There's the 6, exactly as we have here. All right, we'll see you next video.